All right, we're going to be working on word problems today. I know everyone is enthusiastic about that. So let's get to it. One leg of a right triangle has length seven centimeters as drawn here. The other sides have links that are consecutive integers. Let's talk about consecutive integers for a minute. Okay, consecutive integers. Consecutive means one following after the other. And integers are integers. Integers, no, no, not quite. Integers. Um, and so just picking some because they go on forever. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. Forever, in both directions. And all you have to do to get from one to two is add one to one, and that gives you two. Add one to two, and that gives you three, and so on. So there are formulas. There's always a formula. The formula for say the first three consecutive integers, you don't need three for this problem, but <clears throat> a lot of the time you do, three consecutive integers, integers, that's x, x plus one, and x plus 2. Because all you have to do is add 1 every time. If I add 1 to x, I get the next number. If I add 1 to that, I get the next number, which is the same thing as adding 2 to the original number, which is usually the smallest. Usually, this is the smallest almost all the time. There are some exceptions. So, here we have an x and an x plus one. They are consecutive integers. Now, you know and I know that when we're talking about the length of the sides of a right triangle, we're talking about a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Our old friend. Usually the vertical side is called A. And the horizontal side is called B, although the world does not come to an end if you call this side A and that side B. But the world will come to an end if the slanted side, the hypotenuse, isn't called C. This must be side C. A and B, eh, doesn't matter. C matters. Okay, so remember that. Now, if A is seven, we're going to have seven squared. And if B is X, we're going to have x squared. And if c is x plus 1, we're going to have x plus 1 squared. Now let's scroll on up. So that will be 49 plus x squared equals x plus 1 times x plus 1. Don't be fooled. 
When you've got a binomial squared, you have to do that to it. Okay, so 49x plus x squared, I'm sorry, 49 plus x squared equals x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And how I got that was my usual, usual little dealie of going x times x, x times 1, 1 times x, and 1 times 1. Now I'm going to combine my like terms over there. 49 plus x squared equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, this is a quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic equation, because it is an equation, there's an equal sign and there's stuff on the left and stuff on the right. Math stuff on the left, math stuff on the right. So we're going to solve this quadratic equation by putting a zero over here, since it's the shortest side. So I will subtract 49 from both sides. And I will subtract x squared from both sides. So I have 0 plus 0, which is 0, equals, oh, look at this, the x squared 0 out. That usually doesn't happen, but sometimes it does. And that will leave me with 2x plus 1 minus 49 is minus 48. This is not a quadratic equation anymore. It's a linear equation. So we don't have to do a lot of fancy stuff to it. Instead, I'm going to add 48 back over to the other side. This will be zero. 2x equals 48. And I divide by 2, and I divide by 2. So that will mean x equals 24. So this side is going to be 24 centimeters. And this side is going to be 24 plus 1. What could that be? Oh, gosh, golly, 25. 25 centimeters. And so you can check that if you want to. 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. Is that true? I don't know. And we can wait and find out later. Oh, let's find out now. Come on, calculator. 7 squared plus 24 squared equals. Ha! And 25 squared equals. Yes, it's true. We're going to have 625 equals 625. Yay! So what did we do here? We just did our old friend, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, thought up by none other <clears throat> than Pythagoras himself the old Greek who said there couldn't possibly be the square root of a negative number, but he was wrong. Oh, 
OK. So we took this side, squared it, this side, squared it, and set it equal to this side squared. And of course, the most dangerous part of this is getting lazy and saying, oh, well, that must be X squared plus one. Well, it is on the ends, but there's stuff in the middle. So be very careful. Questions about this? Okay, we move on. Consecutive integers, but unfortunately they're not just consecutive integers, they are consecutive even integers. They are even integers that follow one after the other. Here's an example. Negative six, negative four, negative two, zero, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, all of the even, positive and negative, but even integers, whole numbers, positive, negative, and zero. Zero is automatically even. You know why? I'll tell you why. An even number is a number that two will go into evenly. Two goes into zero evenly. It's zero. OK, so now. Our formulas are a little bit different. But not a lot. If we let X be the smallest integer. Let's say it's two, pretend it's two. Oh, let's pretend it's zero. That makes it even easier. Let's pretend that X is zero. Now to get to the next even integer, I have to add two. So X plus two is the middle integer. And then I have to add two to this to get to four. Well, four, I can also get to four if I take X and add four to it. So those are the formulas for consecutive even integers. And it ends up there also the formulas for consecutive odd integers. And you can try it and see if it's not true. OK, so now we have our three integers, the smallest, the middle and the largest. Find three consecutive even integers such that <clears throat> the square of the third is 60 more than the square of the second. Oh dear. OK. Square of third. OK, now see what math does is it takes that sentence that has a lot of words in it and it puts it into symbols. It puts it into math code. 
So that's what we're going to do. The square of the third consecutive even integer. Is. That's equals. 60 more than. the square of the second there we have it so yeah we're going to work it now x plus 4 times x plus Four equals sixty plus x plus two times x plus two. Okay. Okay. So going to take x and multiply it by x, x and multiply it by 4, 4 and multiply by x, and 4 and multiply by 4. And the same thing over here, except we have 2's, x times x, x times 2, 2 times x, and 2 times 2. And so that gives us x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16 equals 60 plus x squared plus 2x plus 2x plus four. Okay. Now on both sides, I'm going to gather like terms together. X squared plus eight X plus 16 equals 60 plus x squared. Well, no, wait a minute now. I want to get my like terms together, right? So, wait a minute here. Let me start over. x squared plus 2x plus 2x, that's plus 4x plus 60 because it's positive, plus 60 plus four is plus 64. And that now is what I have. Now, I think it's just delightful that look what's gonna happen with our X squareds again. They're gonna zero each other out. So let's take care of that right now. Minus x squared, minus x squared. Boom, boom. And now this again, just like the previous problem, is a linear equation. Highest power, one, one. Also by far the easiest to solve, usually. So let's see, I'm going to, uh, because all I have to do is get the X terms on one side of the equal sign and the constant terms on the other side of the equal sign, and then you solve like you've known how to do for years. So I'm going to subtract four X from both sides of the equal sign. 
8 minus 4 is 4, so this will be 4x plus 16 equals these zero out 64. Then, I really like to do this better with a color. I'm going to um, subtract 16 from both sides of the equation and they'll zero out. So I'll be left with 4x equals And I think that's 48. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, now one step left. Divide by 4 and divide by 4. Boom. X equals 12. So the, that's what x is. x is the smallest integer. So 12. If I add 2 to it, I get 14. And if I add 4 to what x is, that'll be 12 plus 4, that'll be 16. Or you just go up by 2s. But I wouldn't be too self... Um, um, I wouldn't be too sure of myself. Better to, to go carefully. Okay. So, this to me, this is the hardest part, which is why I wrote it out in words, and that can actually help. And then you come along and you put the math symbols in for the words. Discussion. Okay. Does it seem to you? I'm sorry. Did we're getting there? Doesn't seem to you. No, no, it's not too hard. Okay, well, let's move on. Maybe we'll find one that is. But right now, they're very basic problems. Now, this one, notice that they have been nice enough to actually write all this stuff out for you. A picture frame measures 12 centimeters by 40 centimeters. All right, and there it is. The yellow thing is the frame. The blue thing is the picture. Okay, so the yellow thing is 12, centime <laughs> 12 centimeters by 40 centimeters. And the area inside of the picture, um, 204 square centimeters of picture shows. All right, so that's in here. The area of this picture is 204 square centimeters, or you could write square centimeters. But in a math class, that's the way it's usually written. Um, what we need to do is find out how wide the picture frame is. Find the width of the frame around the picture. In other words, find X. And notice how the width of the picture here
is 12, but X of that is taken up in the frame and X of that is taken up in the frame so that it ends up that this, the height of the picture is 12 minus 2X, that many centimeters. And the length of the picture, because the length was 40, and then X centimeters, well, the length of the frame is 40, but it's X centimeters wide here and X centimeters wide here. So to find out how wide the picture is, you have to subtract an X and an X from 40, and that's how this length got to be 40 minus 2X. So since length times width equals area of a rectangle, that's what we're going to do. We're going to say area equals length times width. And we're told that the area is 204 square, square centimeters. All I have to do is put 204, and the length is 40 minus 2x. And the width is 12 minus 2x. Okay. Now, there are some easier and harder ways to do this. The most straightforward way is just to go ahead and multiply, but you can pull out a GCF and pull out a GCF and multiply the two GCFs together and then divide both sides of the equation by that GCF but I figure that might be too hard. You know, it takes too much thinking. So let's just go ahead and do our usual deal of saying 40 times 12, 40 times minus 2x, minus 2x times 12, and minus 2x times minus 2x. Then we'll subtract 204. Then we'll still have to factor out a GCF. So, just so you know, if you want to play with this at home and see which way suits you better, that would be fine. And very educational. Okay, so 40 times 12. Forty times twelve is four eighty. Forty times minus two X is minus eighty X. And minus two X times twelve is minus twenty four X. And minus two X Minus, times minus 2x is plus 4x squared. Now, I prefer to combine my like terms before, before I subtract that over. It just kind of keeps it cleaner. So I'm gonna put my 4x squared in front, and then 80x, my, well, minus 80x, negative 80x plus negative 24x is negative 104, whoops, 104x. 
and that's a positive 480. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 204 from both sides. Because I have to, because I need to solve a quadratic equation. And for this, I'm going to pull up my little O calculator again. 480 minus 204 is 276, positive. Okay. Now, I'm ready to start factoring. I'm going to make a bet, sort of, that four is going to be our GCF. All right, I know that four goes into 104. 104, 104 divided by four is 26. Okay, let's check out 276. 276 divided by four is 69. So let me write this down. This is 4x. I have a question. Yes. Uh, where did you get the 4x minus 104x? The 4x squared? Yeah, the 4x squared, yeah, sorry. No, no problem. Since it went from like 480 minus 80x, I like looked away for one second. And it was... Okay, yeah. Oh, I see now. Okay, never mind. Okay, great. No, I'm glad to slow down. Um, where was I? <gasps> yeah, all right. 104 will be minus 26 times 4x plus 69 times 4 equals 0. So now 0 equals 4 times x squared minus 26x plus 69. Now, I'm going to do what I love to do, but I can only do it when I have an equation so that I can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. Here it is. I'm going to, since this is a number, a constant, it doesn't have a variable with it. I can divide it out. If it had a variable with it, I could not. At least I couldn't divide the variable. We don't, nice people don't do that. Okay, divide by four, divide by four. Zero divided by four is zero. So now we have zero equals x squared minus 26x plus 69. And I think we can solve this by factoring. You don't have to. You could use the quadratic formula with a equals 1, b equals negative 26, and c equals 69. But you don't have to here because this is factorable, because 69 is one of those numbers that I have memorized. 
And I know, oh, I was wrong. Maybe not. That's two, three into this is three. Yes, okay. Three times 23 equals 69, positive 69, but so does negative three times negative 23, and those add up to negative 26. That makes me happy. So, we have an X and an X and a minus three and a minus 23. So we have zero equals this binomial factor times this binomial factor. I set each one equal to zero. Add three to both sides. And add 23 to both sides. And I find out that there are two possible answers to my question. Namely, that the picture frame is three centimeters wide, or that the picture frame is 23 centimeters wide. So we look up here to see which one makes sense, and you probably already know that if X were 23 centimeters, then this X alone would be longer than the whole width of the picture frame, the overall width. So um, 23 makes no sense at all. So we can um, mark that out and go with X equals three. Oh, tell me I didn't do that. Ah, there it is, okay. So the width equals three, the width of the picture frame. Excuse me. There. So the whole trick to doing this is to use the information about the area of the part of the picture that's showing. Area of a rectangle is always going to be length times width. So your job is going to be to find, uh, to find out what the length of the picture is and multiply it by the width of the picture and say that that equals 204. Then, I knew there would be a GCF. There often is when you're dealing with numbers that large. 40, 20, 204. So it's just a matter of being sure to pull out your GCF, either early, which probably would have been easier, or later. And then factoring is always faster than using the quadratic formula, but you should also factor out a GCF before you use the quadratic formula. Yes, you should. Okay, any, any questions about this? They're getting a little bit more difficult, these problems. This is a very, very common type of problem. OK, 
Okay. The length of the top of a workbench is seven meters greater than the width. The length of the top of a workbench is seven meters greater than the width. Okay. Well, this is very straightforward. This side is the length. This side is the width. And the length is seven meters greater than the width. And the area is 78 square meters. Well, golly. Let's do it. Area equals length times width. So area equals 78. Well, area is 78. 78 equals the length times the width. I'm going to distribute that W, but the truth is we're used to distributing from the front and not the back. You can always distribute from the back. OK, but there's no reason to mess up your head on a beautiful day like today when you're waiting to make your snow angels. So. Let's do that and let's do that. So we'll have 78 equals W squared plus 7W. Then the zero principle comes in, move that 78 over so I can have a zero on one side of the equal sign. That'll be zero equals W squared plus 70, 7W minus 78. And once again, notice we have a one leading coefficient, so we don't need to factor this by grouping. at least not by the AC method. W, W. Now I need to factor negative 78 into two numbers that add up to seven. Hmm, okay. Well, now that's the downside of factoring. The downside of the quadratic formula is that sometimes numbers get outrageously large. Okay, so if I go here and I take negative 78 and I divide it by X and I go second graph, let's see. Six and 13, yeah, okay. See, don't you feel smart? Wow, I knew that right away. Right, yeah, sure. All right, negative 78 is going to equal positive 13 times negative six. I mean, six plus negative 13 would give me negative seven. So I know I can turn them the other way. Um, all right, so plus 13 and minus 6. And then I set each of the binomial factors equal to 0. Subtract 13, subtract 13. Add six, add six. So 
So W equals negative 13. I dare say that I don't even know for sure what negative 13 meters would be. So I'm going to mark that out. On the other hand, W equals six meters. That's a nice positive number. And what that would mean is W equals six. And the length equals six plus seven, which is positive 13. And we already know that six times 13 is 78 because we got told that over here. So this was real straightforward, and had I been thinking about it, I would have put that one before this one, but I wasn't. Actually, in my math lab, the other one comes first. Any discussion about this? Hey. Aha. Another right triangle. A wire is stretched from the ground to the top of an antenna tower. The wire is 20 feet long. The height of the tower is four feet greater than the distance from the tower's base to the end of the wire right there. Find the distance D and the height of the tower. We can do this thing. What we're going to have is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So h is a, I mean, doesn't have to be, but it's gonna be one or the other, either a or b. So d plus four squared, plus d squared equals 20 squared. And so d plus four squared is going to be d plus four. Let me make this bigger now. d plus four times d plus four that's this, plus d squared equals 20 squared, which is 400. I hate big numbers. Okay. d times d, d times 4, 4 times d, 4 times 4. That will be d squared plus 4d plus 4d plus 16. That's what this is. Plus d squared equals 400. So d squared plus 8d. Oh, there are two d squareds. 2d squared plus 8d plus 16 equals 400. So that's what I've got right now.
OK. Now. I can easily right now take a two. Out of the left as a GCF out of the left side of the equation. Two parentheses D squared plus four D plus eight equals four hundred. I will pull it over in a minute. Divide by two and divide by two, and that will give me D squared plus four D plus eight equals 200. Which I will go out of my way to subtract from both sides. Minus 200, minus 200. So I'll have a zero over here, which is what I need. And over here, I, I will have d squared plus 4d plus 8 minus 200 is going to be minus 192. Yes. And then I'm going to factor, 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 factor. And I have to factor negative 192. So, um, y equals clear negative 192 divided by x. <laughs> and I hit enter, which makes sense, but that's not the right one, no. Um, second graph. Now, what do we want? What do we want? I want two numbers that will add together to equal four. Okay. Twelve and sixteen. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, negative one ninety two. Equals negative sixteen times positive twelve. Let me make sure. Negative sixteen. Positive. Uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Is that positive four. It is. Thank so you. Happy positive sixteen, negative twelve. Right. There you go. Thank you. There now. D plus 16 equals zero. D minus 12 equals zero. Subtract 16 from both sides. You get D equals negative 16. That makes no sense in the context of the problem. And over here, add 12, add 12 you'll have D equals 12, which does make sense in the context of the problem. That's kind of a 12. And then 12 plus four. Is 16. And that's feet, right? 
feet. So D is 12 feet. And uh, H is 16 feet. Hooray for us. Discussion. And here's another one like it. Oh, and it says it's a consecutive integer. The foot of an extension ladder is three feet from a wall. The height that the ladder reaches on the wall and the length of the ladder are consecutive integers. Now, the slanted side is always the longest side of a right triangle. So that's how I knew that would be X and that would be X plus one. Okay, how long is the ladder? So read it again. The foot of an extension ladder is three feet from a wall. The height that the ladder reaches on the wall and the length of the ladder are consecutive integers. So how long is the ladder? The hard part is putting the X and the X plus one in the right place. After that, it's going to be just like that. because we need to do this before it's time to go. And this is called ballistics in the civilian world and in the math world, not civilian like not military, but in the non-math world, this is called ballistics. And in the math world, it's called parabolic motion. Okay, and what you're doing, this is what you're doing. You're very mischievous. You go to the top of a building and you throw a ball out and a little bit up and you want to know when is it going to reach the ground? How long? What time? Not what time on the clock, but how many seconds? Now the neat thing is, is that these problems are always going to give you the equation. The formula, rather. They're always going to give you the formula. And we don't have time right now to talk about what each of these numbers means. They tell you, but there is a formula, and we'll, we might talk about that later. Uh, but anyway, it says the ball is thrown upward with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second. So you throw the ball up at 48 feet per second from a height of 640 feet. Its height H in feet after T seconds, that is the ball. How high up is it after a certain number of seconds, like after one second, after two seconds, after three seconds? This is the path of the ball. And this is not, not feet distance or inches distance, but time. 
So that's what we're measuring is time. How long is it going to take the ball to reach the ground? Well, here's our function. Right there. Notice this is the height from which the ball is thrown. This is the initial velocity. And in case you were wondering, the negative 16 shows the pull down of gravity. H of T is the height of the ball after a certain amount of time. Well, how high is the ball when it hits the ground? Probably it bounces, but the first time it hits the ground, how high above the ground is it? It's zero above the ground. So, we want to know how long it's going to take. What is T? How long is it going to take? Whoa. Don't talk and write, Barbara. How long is it going to take the ball to hit the ground? Well, we have to factor out a GCF. And that GCF is going to have to be negative. Because the leading term is negative. Don't you just hate it? Uh, but we're going to do this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is, I know for a fact almost that 16 will go in here. For instance, negative 16 times t squared plus negative 16 times negative 3 times t. That's a positive 48. So the only way I can get a negative 16 out of there is to also make the 3 negative. Because 3 times 16 is 48. Now I think that 16 times 40 is 640. But let's make sure. Yeah, OK, so the only way to get a negative 16 out of positive 640 is to make that 40 negative as well. Because I have to make sure that this line exactly equals the line before. And that the line before exactly equals that. OK. Now I can pull out a negative 16 GCF. So negative 16 parentheses, T squared. All right, yeah, so now I can mark through the six, negative 16. And what's left over is negative 3T, minus 40, or negative 40. OK. Plus a negative 3T plus a negative 40 is how I got those. Now I divide out negative 16 because it's a number all by itself and it's annoying me. Nothing personal. So zero equals t squared minus 3t minus 40. Now, negative 40 should not be too hard. 
negative 40 equals negative 1 times 40, negative 2 times 20, negative 3, no, but negative 4 times 10, and negative 5 times 8. But instead of negative 5 and 8, I need 5 and negative 8 because 5 plus negative 8 is negative 3. Yay! Okay, so boom, 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 T, T, plus 5, minus 8. And then I set each factor equal to 0. T plus 5 equals 0. T minus 8 equals 0. Let me scroll this up. Subtract 5, subtract 5. T equals negative 5 plus 8 plus 8, t equals 8. Negative time doesn't make a lot of sense. Positive time does. So after 8 seconds, the ball is going to hit the ground. How long will it take for the ball to reach the ground? Eight seconds. Is that it? Is that it? Yes! My goodness. That's it. Now we can go back and do this. I'll set it up for you. You'll have x squared plus three squared equals x plus 1 squared, which of course Oh, let's see if we can get done with this real fast here. So, we have another, do we have another one of those situations where the x squareds are going to go away? Oh, dear. It's happening a lot here, but it almost never happens. Now minus one, minus one, eight equals two x. Divide by two, divide by two, x equals four. Now what are we trying to find? Ah, how long is the ladder? They're not even asking about that. So if you put four in the answer box, eh, not correct. What they want is five because four plus one equals five. Now let's see how they're measuring this feet. So five feet. So the answer box would just contain that. And you would have feet out here, and you would have, what is that? Length of wire, or length of 
what is this? Extension ladder, length of ladder. Ta-da. Uh, 